compressors are tools that allow us to alter the dynamic range or the envelope of a track. The term dynamic range refers to the distance in volume between the softest and loudest points of a track, and the envelope is the track's behavior. In other words, compressors help us control the volume of our tracks and can be used for taming and balancing a track so it sits better in the mix, or in another manner to exaggerate the dynamics and make things actually stand out more. Compressors have very few parameters that work in conjunction with each other. These parameters are threshold, which is the level in which the compressor will start the compression process. Attack will determine how much time it will take the compressor to start compressing once the track's volume crosses the threshold. Release will determine how much time it takes the compressor to reach 0 dB gain reduction after the volume drops below the threshold. Ratio, which is how much compression will be occurring once it kicks in. For example, a 4 to 1 ratio will mean that every 4 decibels crossing the threshold will only add 1 dB to the outputted signal. Knee, which is how soft or hard the transition into compression will be. Soft knee will result with the ratio gradually rising as the signal reaches the threshold, while hard knee will mean that the ratio will just work as it is once the threshold is crossed. Output gain compensates for the level loss from the compression process and lets us level match the signal. And finally, sidechain filter, which will tell the compressor which frequencies to ignore when analyzing the incoming audio. Fast attack times will flatten our transients, resulting with less dynamics. And slow attack times will accentuate transients. Slow attack can also use to achieve compression that is gentle and transparent. I swear I didn't speak as the mic be spin tonight. I swear I didn't speak as the mic be spin tonight. Fast release times can raise a track's tail or ambience and enhance the track's excitement. <laughs> That being said, it can introduce distortion and make a bit of a mess if implemented inappropriately. Slow release times can result with more natural sounding compression and tighter sounds, so to say, but can also choke the signal when it's not breathing with the track's rhythm. Compressors have a detector circuit that listens to the incoming audio and then triggers compression accordingly. The sidechain filter is used to shape the audio arriving to the detector in order to control what triggers compression. Different frequencies add up to different volumes and the low frequencies add up to the highest energy and can create a pumping effect that is not pleasurable. So when you are compressing tracks that have low frequency energy, which you don't want to trigger the compressor, you can filter the low frequencies from the detector and have the the compressor react only to the higher frequency energy. Let's listen to an example. Notice what happens as I raise the filter. As you probably heard, the pumping caused by the low frequencies is reduced and the overall level the compressor reacts to is lower. This simply makes the compression process more accurate and prevents these unwanted pumping sounds. It's important to note that the compressor's parameters all work together and don't really stand by themselves. Let's see this in practice. I will use a very visual compressor to make the principle clear, but remember that when we mix, we work with our ears and not with our eyes. Let's take the vocal track from the mixing exercise files as an example. I swear I didn't speak as the mic be spin tonight. The first thing to do when you want to compress audio is to figure out what it is that you want to achieve. So I hear that the word I and the mic are popping out a bit and I want to balance them out with the rest of the track. As a starting point, set your compressor to an 8 to 1 ratio with a fast attack and release times and a hard knee. Now, let's lower the threshold as the track plays and hear when the compression starts kicking in. I swear I didn't speak as the mic be spin tonight. I swear I didn't speak as the mic be spin tonight. 
I swear I didn't speak as the mic be spinning tonight. I'm taking the threshold further than it's called for so we can hear the compression in its extreme and dial in the next parameters to meet our needs more easily. Let's start with the attack. We will slowly open up the attack and listen to where it lets the transient or initial peaks come through and tailor that until we reach an attack we like the sound of. I swear I didn't speak as the mic be spinning tonight. I swear I didn't speak as the mic be spinning tonight. I swear I didn't speak as the mic be spinning tonight. After we set our attack time, we'll figure out the release. We'll slow down the release until we hear the compressor moving with our source and not choking its dynamics. Since, as I mentioned, the goal we are working towards is a balanced and natural sound. I swear I didn't speak as the mic be spinning tonight. I swear I didn't speak as the mic be spinning tonight. I swear I didn't speak as the mic be spinning tonight. After having the attack and release set, we can figure out what ratio we want for our compression. Let's start with 2 to 1 and slowly raise the ratio to see the effect it has on the source, along with how it interacts with the attack and release parameters. I swear I didn't speak as the mic be spinning tonight. I swear I didn't speak as the mic be spinning tonight. I swear I didn't speak as the mic be spinning tonight. I swear I didn't speak as the mic be spinning tonight. If your compressor gives you the option to play with the knee parameter, you can set it before or after you adjust the threshold. The knee will smooth out the entrance to the full compression ratio, and it can help refine the compressor's reaction to incoming audio. Now that we have these parameters set, we can adjust the threshold. Don't be surprised if some settings need to be refined, because as I mentioned, all the parameters work in conjunction, and the fact that the threshold is being adjusted might mean that more adjustments will need to be made. I swear I didn't speak as the mic be spinning tonight. I swear I didn't speak as the mic be spinning tonight. I swear I didn't speak as the mic be spinning tonight. I swear I didn't speak as the mic be spinning tonight. I swear I didn't speak as the mic be spinning tonight. The final step will be making up for the level loss with the output gain. Compressors will have gain reduction VUs, sometimes marked as GR, that will show you how much level is reduced. But I recommend listening to the processed and unprocessed signal and adjusting the volume between the two, since the compression can create different forms of level change. I swear I didn't speak as the mic be spinning tonight. I swear I didn't speak as the mic be spinning tonight. I swear I didn't speak as the mic be spinning tonight. I swear I didn't speak as the mic be spinning tonight. Setting the compressor in this way is a very good practice to use until you feel you've wrapped your head around the subject. Start with a low threshold and fast attack and release times. Get the attack set, then the release, ratio, and threshold. Tailor the settings to fit the final threshold point, and finally adjust the output gain to compensate for the level loss.